I have a daughter, Sabira Abu Bakr, um, who is a young doctor in, in Jamaica. She's doing her internship and she went into the hospital on the 29th of September last month. Um, tomorrow I will be 73 years young, inshallah, if I live. And uh, my children said, that, uh, why don't you go and take a little holiday, uh, you, you overworking yourself. So go to Jamaica and spend a little time with Sabira for a couple of days. So myself and the mother of Sabira, uh, Sister Althea Abubakar, and my son Fuad uh, Abubakar, we went to Jamaica on Wednesday. On my arrival in Jamaica, um, we were unceremoniously ushered out of the, the, the plane by a number of uh, security officers, immigration officers and police officers, and brought into a holding area. We were then informed uh, that we are not allowed to enter Jamaica because we are considered a threat to the national security of Jamaica. I sought to inquire where from did this information come from because it is my first time in Jamaica and I have not committed any offenses in Jamaica. So how am I now debarred from entering into Jamaica because of uh, security reasons, because I am a threat to the security, the national security of Jamaica. I further informed them that I have been traveling to and from uh, uh, Grenada, because my daughter was first in, in the university in Grenada, and then she transferred to Mona, after she was finished her first degree. And I informed them that I was traveling to one from Grenada, and there was ne never any hindrance to my coming to Jamaica as a Caribbean country. And now this is a surprise to me. So they said, well, this is the information that they have, that I am a threat to the national security, and so I will not be allowed. Well, I sought to, um, to clarify this matter because they just give me a, a paper saying under the card, come on, we're in 4 1. You know, I'm not allowed to come in. I said, well, what is 4 1? Let me know the wording of 4 1. And they could not present me with that. Um, I wanted to, not to misquote me. There was an inspector of police who was doing the interrogation and a custom officer. The inspector of police, very, very professional. Make no to I said, he was very, very professional. He was not rude, he was not loud, he did not shout down at me. He was trying to understand from his position and from my position how this matter could be resolved. After a lot of cooing and throwing him going backward and forward and calling people, about an hour, he came back with a smile on his face, and I myself, obviously, I had a smile on my face. I said, he's a bearer of good news. And he was a bearer of good news because he told me, look here, I've done all that I can to stop by. And your wife and your son is allowed to go, but you will not be allowed to come to me. I don't want to rephrase that because I'm not the engineer. Yeah? So rephrase that. He said, if only I spotted you, you uh, will be detained here and you will be put on the next flight. So we stayed there and talking to some people while I guess the flight is being prepared and then talking to some people. And then I spoke to a particular official and asked him, Chief, what is all this? He said, why? You know, I know what this is about. It's about not a nonsense, right? Because you are a man of Gavia and his own heart. You can see why you can't come in a territory. Farrakhan are coming here to organize a whole 10 million man war. And they now stop Farrakhan. Farrakhan are here now. And the Bafaka are making the government minister. Farrakhan won't slip and say anything he wants. 
And for I can hear no to do that, for I can not debug. Why did they bind you? So I think, well, you must have some other reason. I made a call. This is a high official. He said, Bass. Quiet. Hello, quiet. Stop the sale. Now, don't misquote me now. He said, Bass, the Jamaican attack in government are peace out. I said, not on me. Why? Last week. Them are hold some Jamaican send them back home. And them are not giving them no phone call. Them are giving them no food to eat. Them are making them sleep on the floor. Right? And more than that, them are murder Jamaican youth man in Trinidad. I'm making him kneel down on the ground and shoot him in the head. And, and Jamaican are pissed off with that. So, man, you understand who you are facing with here now? So I said, yeah, but, but where is this coming from that I should be? But, say, but where you now come from? I say, Trenda, then you understand where you come from. You understand that this direction, this information has come from your own country. Right? So I, then I had a better understanding of their position. And further stated, imagine I'm with your government minister. I have to tell your, your minister of national security, shut up! Shut up! So you know who them are peace off, man. So try and understand it, get who saying with you on the here now. And of course I had a better understanding of what I was confronted with at the time, right? Um, I will allow now some questions. Well, let me finish this part. Yeah? Um, I stayed there and I was not allowed to make any calls. I, I was totally uh, I was totally disappointed because I, I drew the attention to the, the police officer that even if I am arrested, I am allowed to make a call. He said, well, Bas, you, you are a policeman. You know you are entitled to make this call, but they must say no call. So I was not able to make any call, right? Anyway, as the evening prolonged, my son and my wife went out and they kept me waiting on the next flight to come back home. Um, when they came to me, they said the flight was ready after the flight was going to go. I told them, I'm not leaving here unless I get an explanation, a proper explanation why I am the bad. Then they say, well, does, if I say if I commit an offense, then arrest me and take me to the court and let the court say I have committed an offense in Jamaica. They say this is not a report, this is a government policy, a new government policy, and they put the hands up for me to take me to the, to the plane. I, I went to the plane and I went, I, I entered through the back of the plane, yeah? Um, they told me to sit down in the economy, the last seat in the economy, which is very small. I'm six foot feet, foot four inches. My feet cannot fit in. And I have a surgery on my foot, which means that I must stretch my foot off. So I told them I have a first class ticket to and from Jamaica. And therefore, if I am going to travel on this plane, then I'm going to travel first class, or I'm not going at all. Then they went to one floor, to one floor, with the pilot and the airlines. And I, I think at one stage I overheard that the pilot said if it's one person they can uh, bump off somebody, one person, but not five, which is four people, two people from the defense force, a policeman and, a, a, and, a, and a, uh, an immigration officer, and myself would have been five. The, the pilot is saying that he cannot bump off five people. And he has to stay in St. Martin and pick up some people. He also has to stay in Babylon and pick up some people. So they were to and fro all the time, trying to resolve this matter. And finally, the pilot did not concede to their wishes. He said, close the hatch because we have to leave, because people have to make connecting flights. And then they say, sit down. You sit down right there and die. I said, no, no, no. No, no. I am not sitting down right there at all. I sit down in the first class because I have a first class seat, right? And then they said, excuse me, but I said, you say you must sit down right there. Fortunately, the, the senior police officer 
who I say, very polite, very professional, I say, this is the man right that is being infringed. You have a first class ticket, and you cannot force him to sit here. At that stage, I was, of course, on ceremony, ushered out the plane, the plane left, and I was put in a hole in bay. Um, they just left me there, and I saw nobody at all. I, I, I made my prayer, I made my prayer, and then uh, after that I, I asked my God, you know, give me a way out of this because there's nobody to talk to, there's some Chinese in some dark rooms there, but I'm sitting in, in a comfortable room, there are many chairs and I'm sitting there by myself, there's nobody to talk to. A police officer came and stood by the door, and that was it. And then as soon as I was finished my prayer, in come the answer to the prayer, America. The, I have since then made a prayer that I wish the government could have more people than the woman who strode into that room. Her name is Dr. Iva Ludo. And she walked into the room and said, what are you doing here? And then I proceeded to explain her. She said, well, you, you are a citizen of China and Tobago and I am the High Commissioner. And I'm going to see that this thing is made right. And she's very well connected. In about 20 minutes, she had the assistant commissioner of police present. She had a lot of high profile people. She was on her phone typing the prime minister. You know, she was talking to the minister of national security. She was talking to the people to find out what is the situation in here and what has to be done. And then after a lot of that, to one friend, to one friend, she said, did you get anything to eat? I said, no, I have nothing to eat. And also, I did not, I am protesting four months that I was not allowed to make a phone call. I complained to the commissioner of the police. And then he said, well, OK, you know how things are sometimes. You will be allowed to make the call now to the daughter. And he allowed me to make the call through the high commissioner. And she was very, very, very good. She said, the man cannot sit here because the man has an injury to his leg. And he has a hypertension, and he's also a, a diabetic case. And the Lord provided no food for him to eat. To get some food for him now. And furthermore, he don't eat no meat, so get something with some fish. And they went and they got some fish and some peas, I think, which I just nibbled on because I had to take my insulin. And then she stayed there with me until she said the flight at the at the green, the Trinidad government and the Jamaica government had agreed to fly me back home by a private jet. Right? So um, they said the jet was going to leave. Um, the, the jet was going to leave um, at seven o'clock. Right? So I said, well, it's just a few hours to seven o'clock. I went and I, I made my prayer. They allowed me to make my prayer to worship and make my prayer. And when seven o'clock, she was still there, and there was no flight. And then I went to ten o'clock, and she was still there, and there was no flight. And then by that time, she said, "Listen, this they put the imam in a hotel, you know, where he can lie down and rest because he cannot stay here. I will not let a citizen of Trinidad stay here under these conditions, especially because of it." his uh, medical condition. Put him in a hotel, that is statutory, you have his class, but he can't fly with wings. And then they said, well, they don't want me to leave the, the airport. So they, they took me into a room with two beds, and I was able to lie down. Um, I want to make mention of this, and I hope you mention. When the, the assistant commissioner for this came, a, a woman, and she is, I, I would say, more than 50 years, she's not a young woman, she came, and I think she might have been assigned to stay and make sure everything was all right. And that superintendent of police, that woman, stayed with me all night until 3 o'clock in the morning. She was very kind. She sent to get the paramedic to check my, my blood pressure. Of course, by that time, my blood pressure gone out of control. And then she told the paramedic, you'll come back here in half an hour, in an hour time and make sure this the imam pressure goes down because, you know, the, we don't want this man to collapse in here. And the paramedic came back an hour after. I took some medication and it went down a little bit. I, it was 200 and something, over 100 and something. That struck him again. Of course, the anxiety, of course, and I, I, I used it the best method and I tried to calm myself in the circumstances. So the pressure went down a little bit. She was happy and she allowed me 
the water they wash from as many times as I could because the diuretic allows you to take off the water from the blood and lower the blood pressure and I was allowed to rest comfortably. Well, like, oh, you know you can't sleep in these events, but at least I was comfortable. And she made sure that, you know, I got something to eat. The High Commissioner went and she got that chocolate. She got some, some sugar cane for me and she bought me some sweets to make sure that the, the pressure do not, I mean, don't dip on me, you know, and then I have no sweets or nothing. So she went and she got sugar cane, uh, a chocolate. I still have some I can share with you if you wish. And uh, also uh, some sweets. So I, I was prepared, I mean, I mean, for my health condition, I was okay. And then she left after 12 and she said, you know, she would be in Pernambuco because she had a television in the the next morning. And so every hour on the hour she would call the superintendent, the superintendent would bring the phone and say, speak to your high commissioner. And she was on the phone with me until 3 o'clock in the morning when I called it that day. So a special, special thanks to the commission, uh, to the, the inspector of police in Jamaica who was very, very professional. A special thanks to the, super, the, the woman superintendent of police. And uh, I don't know, friend, that you have one good high commissioner, you have Mrs. Gordon. She is, she is a real, real ambassador.